Thank you to Kenneth Copeland Ministries for sowing the airtime for this broadcast. There's enough power in every sick room and in every hospital room to raise up that sick one that may be describing you. Yes, you yes. may be in a sick room. Yep. You may be in a hospital room. And I want to remind you, power is present. That power is there to do a work. Believe in what's present, not try to get something, but notice that he's already made it yours. It's present right where you're at. Say, I receive that power. I receive, I receive that power. I receive it right now. I receive it right From now. From the top of my head. From the top of my to head. the soles of my feet. The soles of my feet. Welcome. We're so glad to have you with us today for Jesus the Healer. Come on in. We've been saving you a spot. Yes. And you say, where's my spot? Right in front of that device. Yes. And uh, we're just glad to have you with us. We're so grateful you love the Word. We love the Word. And uh, we love uh, being doers of the Word. Yes. Amen. It gives us the, the best life, doesn't yes. it? Amen. Amen. And we have been on a series that I trust is a blessing to you. It's, we've been teaching out of my book called The Price of the, the Double Portion Anointing. And uh, when you read this, I, you might be thinking, I don't want you to misunderstand that I'm saying that everyone is going to have a double portion anointing. But really, what the principles that are taught in this are applicable to everyone because every believer has an anointing that abides within them. And we need to know how to yield to that, how to draw on that anointing so that it can flow unhindered in our life. Yes. Amen. Yes. So we've been on a series teaching out of this book. It's uh, something that happened in 2018 when Jesus came into my hotel room and spoke to me in St. Petersburg, Russia. And he talked to me about this very title, The Price of the Double Portion Anointing. And... Um, it's, but it, it's, it's basic for everyone. Mm -hmm. And so we invite you, get hold of the book. It'll be a blessing to you. In referring to it, as I said, there's an anointing that abides within everyone. And that measure of anointing does not increase. Mm -hmm. Yet we can increase our skillfulness in yielding to it. Yes. And yes. therefore it can flow in a stronger measure or a lesser measure based on how we respond mm -hmm. to that anointing. Mm -hmm. Um, we don't want to hinder that flow. Right. We want it to flow at its right. full measure. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Now, there is an anointing for those who are set apart for the fivefold ministry apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher. Um, there is an anointing that comes upon mm -hmm. to fulfill and stand and occupy those offices. Mm -hmm. Uh, but even then, that anointing that comes upon is not for the minister himself. It's for the people he ministers to. Mm -hmm. And so the anointing that comes upon can be increased in measure. So in this book, we do talk about that. But for the born again believer that has an anointing that abides within, we need to know um, what will hinder the flow of that or what will give way to the flow of that. Amen. And so this is what we've been talking about. Um, over the past several episodes, um, we're taking what Jesus said to me that time in, um, in St. Petersburg, Russia. We have to be skillful with power. The anointing of God is the power of God. And when you're dealing with power, you can't just handle power any old way you want. Right. Right. Amen. We have to, there is a responsibility. When somebody has uh, more power available to them, there's a greater responsibility that they are to walk in. That's, that's so, if, if you work a job, let's say if you work for a company and you come into a position that's an entry level position, you have a measure of responsibility, but if you get advanced to management, then you have greater responsibilities that come with more power or more authority, right? And so it's the same thing with the anointing that for us to have a greater flow of it, it calls for us to have a greater skill in working with it. Yes. Right. 
When I think of power, you know, uh, for someone who's been driving for many years, they are excited to get in a car that can maybe a sports car that's got a lot of power to it, a lot of guts to it. But the, what you don't want to do is put the first time driver in a car that's got a lot of guts and lots of power, right? It will overwhelm them, right? And uh, what's that mean? We have to develop so that we can be skillful in handling greater degrees of power. And so there are certain things that Jesus spoke to me about um, when I was in Russia about that. And I'm going to take some time today um, and I'm going to read what he said to me that night in, in total. I'll read that. Um, he spoke to me on one evening and then the next morning there were other things that he spoke to me by his spirit about. But Jesus spoke to me that night about these particular things. Um, we have gone through that in the previous episodes of what Jesus said. We taught about it specifically, so we want you to go back and watch that. Coming up, we're going to go further with what the Spirit of God said to me the next morning. And uh, anyway, I'm just saying we're not done with this series. That's what I'm saying. We've got a ways to go on this series. My goodness, I have 88 pages in front of me that we have not gotten into yet. And I have another hundred at home coming. So you say, how long? Well, you're just going to have to stay around a good long time. Why? Because when Jesus says something, it's worth camping on. I mean, when he says he brings out and emphasizes certain things, we don't want to treat that lightly. We want to give it its proper instruction and proper place. So Jesus said to me that night, he said this, to walk accurately and in the fullness of this era and season, do not misspeak under the anointing. Bring great consecration to the tongue and speech, not speaking lightly, inappropriately, or with exaggeration. Only truth can be in your mouth, for God and his power only flow through truth. And then Jesus said to me, I only said what I heard my father say. I only did what I saw my father do. Uh, what is he saying? He said, I stayed with truth. He did not take of his own thinking or way of thinking and try to insert it. He only represented what God said. Yes. He, didn't, wow. he did not present his opinions to people. He presented what God said to the yes. people. That's right. Amen. That's right. um, how important, and when I think about this passage that we just read, I think about the first thing that Jesus was talking to me about, and it's not just for me, it's for the whole body of Christ. Mm -hmm. Um, it's important to note that the first thing he started dealing with in relation to the anointing and walking under a greater flow of that anointing um, is dealing with the mouth, yeah. Yeah. Right. dealing with words, yeah. right. dealing with how we use our tongue, mm -hmm. yeah. how we communicate, yes. what we say. Mm -hmm. um, we don't, when we have conversations with people, we don't just speak in scripture and verse, but yet scripture should govern what we say. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Meaning if this isn't in line with the word, we're not real interested in conversing about it. Yeah, that's right. In the sense of, I'm not going to insert just my opinion. It doesn't matter what I think. It matters what God thinks. Right. And so right. there's a spiritual discipline here to pay attention to what you're, what you're saying. And make, knowing this, that how we speak will affect the, the flow of the anointing that abides within us. Yes. It, it will affect. You know, we can't, let's just say this in a, in a marriage, how we speak to one another in a marriage will affect how strongly that anointing that abides within us can flow in our home. Yes. Yeah, right. yeah. Mm -hmm. whether, whether we realize it or not, um, how we're conducting our everyday life will affect the flow of that anointing. Yes. Too many times people think that, I, I think they, they just assume that it's what we do at church or when we're gathered together in a spiritual type setting, but it's our everyday life yes. because he abides within us. Yes. Amen. Yes. We don't separate going to church and living right every single day. These are the things that are, it's a flow of our life. We don't yes. act one way at church and another way every day. That's, right. That's, right. That's right. amen. We, yes. we, we are to live in line with the word every day and it's not yes. just something we pay attention to at church time. Yes but it's what we live every day. Amen. 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 So I think it interesting that in talking about the anointing, the first thing he brought up was how we use our mouth. 
Well, how many of you know that how we use our mouth is going to be dictated by what we allow in our thought life? Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. That's right. So to guard your mouth, you have to guard your thought oh, life. Yeah. Yeah. You have to. Yeah. We can't let our thoughts just go anywhere and think that we're going to arrive, arrive at saying the right words mm -hmm. when we're not having right thoughts. Right. God can only work through right thinking. Uh -huh. yeah. That's right. He can't work through wrong thinking. No. Wrong thinking opens the door to the enemy. So to have right words, we have to address our thought life. Yes. Right. Yes. And how do we address our thought life? With the word. Yep. We yes. renew our minds with the word. We bring our minds into agreement mm -hmm. with the word of God. Right. Amen. Amen. So Jesus said, he said, you have the help you need for this task with the tongue through the Holy Spirit. Aren't you grateful yeah, wow. yes. that he's letting us know it's not just by willpower. It's not by your own human ability. It takes divine power and divine help to, to, to have a tongue that speaks right. Yes. Amen. Yes. The Holy Ghost is our teacher. Yes. And we need that divine teacher to help us use our tongues rightly, yes. use our mouths and our words rightly. Yes. Amen. 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 So Jesus said, you have the help you need for this task with the tongue through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will help you. But choose to have a guard set over your mouth, to have your tongue tamed by the power, help, and reliance upon the Holy Spirit. For no man on his own can tame the tongue. It requires the divine help of the Holy Spirit. So notice this phrase, choose to have a guard set over your mouth. Yes. Now, What's that mean? Well, the Holy Spirit is in us. And when we go to say something, listen, the Holy Spirit, if it's something that's wrong, the Holy Spirit, many times you'll sense him check you on the inside before yeah. you say yeah. it, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. So what is that? That's the guard. And uh, he, he will help us as a guard over our mouth, but we can't override his help. Right. So when he right. says, choose to have a guard set over your mouth, he's saying you have to, you have to yield to that. Mm -hmm. Don't overstep it because then you're not, you're not, you're not utilizing the help that's available mm -hmm. to Amen. you. That's right. um, not only does the Holy Spirit act as a help on the inside of us with our tongue, what about this? The love of God that's on the inside of us will constrain us mm -hmm. is what the word said. The love will constrain us, meaning this, when it's against love on the inside of us, love will rise up and check us. Don't say, would love say that? Mm -hmm. Would love, look at this, would love think that? Right. That's right. And not only that, would love do that? Yeah. So the love of God is a help to us as well, yes. isn't it? To help us check how we use our tongue. Yes. Amen. Then Jesus went on and he made this statement. He said, slowness to make changes that I deal with you about is unacceptable. Mm -hmm. Notice this, slowness to make changes. We're all making changes. Right. Yes. The Word tells us about God and, and about Jesus. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Yes. He doesn't need to change. Right. He's not going to change. Why? When you're perfect, you don't need to change. Right. But, but about us, it says that we are changed from glory to glory. Yes. So what's this mean? We're invited to change because that's how, how we come into greater degrees and greater flows of the glory of God. Mm -hmm. So we're welcome to change because in ourselves, we're not perfect. <laughs> and so we have to, as we more fully cooperate with the word, we have a greater flow of the benefits of that word in our life. Right. Amen. Amen. So what's this mean for the rest of our life? We're looking to change. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm, that's, yeah. that's where I'm trying to get to on that. <laughs> for the rest of our life, there's something to change. Don't get, don't get, if I could say this, immovable yeah. in the sense of being rigid and refusing to make changes. Don't get adamant about where you are, just say, Father, anything I need to change, I'm looking to change. Yes. Amen. Amen. And that's what the Word will show you, changes that we get to make, right? Uh -huh. And not only that, we have the help of the Holy Ghost and the help of the Word in those changes. Yes. So yes. Jesus said, slowness to make changes I deal with you about is unacceptable. Now notice, I'm so grateful that God doesn't say, let me show you everything wrong with you. <laughs> <laughs> Right? Yes. From the day we get born again, he does not give us a checklist of everything you better get ordered before you arrive here in heaven. 
He doesn't do that. Every day he deals with us. Yes. Just yes. a day at a time. Yeah. You, why? Because he doesn't ad- expect us to address everything at once. Right. Just address what he's dealing with us about right. at yes. that particular time. Yes. And every day of your life, he will be dealing with you about yes. something. Yes. And it's a joy to address that. Yes. Why? Because yes. there's greater glory on the other yes. side of that yes. change. Yes. You say, what changes are you talking about? Well, how about this? Changes in the way we think. Changes yes. in the way we speak. Th- right. Changes in the way we, we act. Yes. Right. Amen. 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 And all those changes play into a greater flow for our life. Yes. So he said, slowness to make changes that I deal with you about. Not all changes that need to be made, all the changes he's dealing with you about. Right. He said, it's unacceptable to be slow in making changes. Why? Because when God is dealing with us about something, it's because he knows, first of all, we're going to have to change something so he can promote us further. Uh But also sometimes we have to change something so we get the door closed to the devil. Now, if we're slow to make changes, then he can't promote us as quickly as he'd like. And then the enemy can also get in when he shouldn't have gotten in if we would have made that change quickly. That's right. So that's why he, it's unacceptable to him that there's slowness because it ends up affecting us negatively if we're too slow to make changes. And he said, there is to be prompt obedience to my correction, direction, and instruction. Um, Jesus made this statement. He said, uh, if you love me, keep my commandments. Right? Right? So... Our measure for God, one way we demonstrate our measure for God is obedience to his word. Uh So if we're slow to obey, our love is hindered. Our love is not growing as it should be growing. Amen. And we always want our love to be growing. Our our, our expression of it, yielding to love in a growing manner. Uh Amen. That fruit of love growing rich on the vine. Amen. Um, so he said, there is to be prompt obedience to my correction, direction, and instruction. The slowness of change is a bad habit of the flesh. Mm. Oh, see the flesh, the flesh just wants to stay the way it is. Yeah. So if we're not making changes, know this, we have a bad habit in place. And he says, the slowness of change is a bad habit of the flesh. Look at this, but he said, it can be broken through the power of the spirit. Walking in the spirit is a requirement and a must for that change to take place. So he's saying this, when you yield to your spirit, changes are made. If you're yielding to your flesh, you won't make changes. If you're yielding to your mind, you won't make changes. But if you yield to the spirit, your own spirit, let the spirit, a man, lead you, dominate you. Then it'll lead you into changes that you need to make and you'll advance quickly. Amen. 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 Then Jesus went on and he said, when Elisha asked for a double portion of the anointing upon Elijah, Elijah told him he asked a hard thing. It was not hard for God, but it would call for a hardness of Elisha toward his mind and flesh. What's that mean? What we've been okay with in the past, we can't be okay with if we want the anointing of God that abides within to flow in a great measure. Amen. We have to deal with our mind. Deal with our flesh, not just say, well, that's just the way I am. No, that's really not the way you am. (laughs) The way we are is a new creature in Christ. That's That's the real us. And we want our thought life and our flesh to reflect the real us, the true us, the new creature in Christ. Amen. So he said it was not hard for God. And he's talking about to give Elisha a double portion of anointing. But he said, but it called for a hardness of Elisha toward his mind and flesh. Know this, it wasn't going to be God who was going to be hard toward Elisha's mind and flesh. It was going to be Elisha who was going to be hard towards his own mind and flesh. That's right. Amen. So that's our responsibility to do something with our mind and our flesh. What do we do about it? Well, we present at Romans 12 verse 1 says, we present our bodies to God and we renew our minds with the word. Amen. 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 So Jesus said about Elisha, he said he could not be tolerant toward weakness of his mind and flesh if he was to carry a double portion of the anointing. He said, uh, you must be sober about the responsibility that anointing calls for. Uh, It calls for you to be pleased to bring yourself in line with the responsibilities of that anointing. Now, 
You say, what do you mean bringing ourselves in line with the responsibilities of the anointing? Well, let's just break it down to something more natural that we could have an example of. Um, what about when somebody, uh, a, young, a young man, he starts, he's 16 years old and he's able to get his driver's license and he gets him a car. And the parents said, okay, you had the car, but now you had the responsibilities with the car. The only thing about the car is not, oh, good, I get to go out with my friends and I can drive. Uh, no, now you got a car you got to clean. You got to gas it. You got to tend to the maintenance of it. Uh, if, you're, if you're buying it as a kid, buying it himself, maybe now he has to make the payment himself. What about the insurance? You see, um, what about if he's making the payment? Now he has a job to help meet those payments. Boy, just getting to ride free with your friends was not free. (laughs) There were a lot of responsibilities tagged onto it. Well, the the anointing is a blessing, but there are responsibilities around it. And we have to be glad to take on those responsibilities. Um, If that, if that, um, how many times has a family said, oh, mom, dad, we want a new dog. We want a new cat, whatever. (laughs) Want a new one. And what's the parent go? I know I'm going to end up having to take care of that dog. Why? Because people get it. Kids get excited about getting the new pet, but they're not excited about the responsibilities of the pet. Right? Yeah, and if you're not going to take care of the responsibilities, then you can't have a pet, you right, see. Right. Well, it's the same thing that Jesus is letting us know. This, this anointing that destroys yokes, it calls for responsibilities of those who are carriers of that anointing. Well, you're a carrier of that anointing. Yes. Amen. And it's a joyous thing to do the responsibilities because it arrives you at being able to be a blessing. You know, if kids just think about, oh, I don't want to take care of, I don't want to go feed the dog. I don't want to give the dog a bath. They've forgotten about the enjoyment the dog brings them. So how do you protect the the flow you enjoy is take care of the responsibilities connected with that flow. Amen. Amen. And uh, the more we deal with our thought life and the more we deal with our body, the more we will enjoy our life. Amen. Amen. So he was talking about that we are to be pleased to bring ourselves in line with the responsibilities of the anointing. Deal with the thought life. Deal with our flesh. Mm -hmm. And then he said this to me, Smith Wigglesworth is an example of the consecration and responsibility toward that anointing. Now, you say, why did he use Smith Wigglesworth? Well, because he knew that I had studied his life some. I was acquainted with a measure of his life so far as what we can find in books. And says, he lived and walked in the spirit with ease, freedom, and liberty. How did he do that? As he spent his days feeding and meditating on the word and in fellowship with God through his ongoing devoted prayer life. So he's saying, how did he live in this place where the anointing flowed freely? He walked in the spirit and he was able to walk in the spirit as he fed on the word and as he spent time in fellowship with the father. And he said this, be mindful and purposeful to give yourself to the lifestyle of intake of the word and fellowship with me through continued prayer. Jesus went on and he said, my yoke is light and easy. So this can be accomplished. What can be accomplished? Walking in the spirit. Uh This can be accomplished with lightness and ease as you give yourself to focusing on continually feeding and meditating on the word and continual prayer and fellowship with God. Doing these two things will help you to keep the door closed to the mind. And I see that's what we're after. Keep the, keep the door closed to the, keep the door to the mind closed to the enemy and the flesh so that the enemy and his strategies cannot gain entrance. Yes. Then Jesus said this, meditate often and much on the lightness and ease of my yoke Mm -hmm. so that you think rightly toward these things. Meaning this, it's not hard to spend time in the word. It's not hard to find time for the word. It's not hard to find time to to talk to God and spend time with God and just learn to weave those moments throughout your day. They don't just have to be assigned to a certain place and location and posture. Amen. 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 Um, so Jesus said this to me that night. He said, in my presence is fullness of joy. Mm-hmm. Carry out my plan in my presence. Mm-hmm. That means uh, your attention on him. Yes. 
Amen. He said, then you will hold yourself in the joy of this flow where the mind and the body are always kept under the dominion of your spirit as you have a continual intake of the word and prayer. He said, there is no burden to the responsibilities of the anointing. As you take up your cross to follow me, it lifts you into the lightness and ease of my flow. I never conducted my earthly life as being under a burden of the price I was to pay. Life for me was a great joy and delight. I only experienced being a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief for a few brief moments on the cross. What's that mean? He did not spend his life worrying about what he was going to face. He wasn't even thinking about it till he got there. In fact, he didn't even pray about it till the Garden of Gethsemane right before he was arrested. So he went on and he said, I carried sorrows and griefs so that you would never experience them for a moment. Yes. In bearing them, I freed you from them so that you would only live your life under that which is light and easy. Amen. 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 He says, you need this to accomplish the fullness of my will. What? To live in the light and easy flow. Yes. Yes. Now move in it and you will be lifted above that which tries to trouble you. As you walk daily in this direction, you will see difficulties and challenges fall off you. Well, this is something that um, we've been teaching out of the price of the double portion anointing book. These, we record that, what he said, but the next morning, the Spirit of God spoke some more things to me, and we're going to dive into those in future episodes. We want you to get hold of your copy of this book you can go to JesusTheHealer.org at our website and you can purchase your copy and we'll get it right out to you. Uh, just know this, the reason we're able to come and share these things with you is for one reason, because of the generosity and the faith of Kenneth Copeland and the generosity of Kenneth Copeland Ministry Partners because Brother Copeland has taken the partner gifts that come into his ministry and he pays for all the airtime of my broadcast, as well as every programmer you see on this channel. It is a remarkable thing yes. that they do. And so if this broadcast is a blessing to you and you're not already, please pray about becoming a partner with Kenneth Copeland Ministries today. And you can sign up to become a partner by going to kcm.org and you can sign up there. And until next time, remember this, Jesus is the healer. God bless you. To watch or listen to today's message and other messages by Nancy Dufresne, visit DufresneMinistries.org. In this book, The Price of the Double Portion Anointing, Nancy Dufresne gives clarity on how we are to walk successfully in this era. It instructs those in the ministry, but also brings instruction to every believer in helping them to fulfill the will of God for their lives. Order this book now at DufresneMinistries.org. Come join us for our Jesus the Healer Crusade in Fresno, California at Elite Event Venue, located at 4105 West Fig Garden Drive, Fresno, California, 93722. The dates are March 25th through the 29th. For more information and to register, visit our website at DufresneMinistries.org. Come expecting miracles. We trust you've enjoyed this message. Visit us at DufresneMinistries.org to learn of our upcoming meetings, share your testimony, submit a prayer request, or visit our online store. Thank you to the friends and partners of Dufresne Ministries for making this production possible.